I posed a value proposition to our management. Initially, it was to address many things like RF connectors and RF devices, radio frequency devices. Why? Because glass is the perfect substrate for um, electrical reasons. Um, it's superior in electrical isolation. It has a very low dielectric constant. In fact, you can push it to fuse silica and have one of the best dielectric constants. It's hermetic. Um, we put vias in it, and the vias are hermetic as well. Uh, it's very low warpage and uh, has a high resistance to corrosion. So we've got some things that help within the medical industry. We name it glass core technology because we're using all sorts of glass. It's at the core of the package, and it is a technology. It is evolving right now. I won't spend too much time on this, but we have an RDL, or redistribution layer, that we can make that glass look just like a substrate, a laminate substrate that are used, or a print and circuit board that are used in the industry nonstop. This, we also have to have a via that's pretty robust, and it's called a through glass via, or TGV. It's much different than a TSV, or a through silicon via, which is very popular, particularly in the memory industry, and also in our cell phone cameras. The cameras actually use TSVs, and it was basically the first technology to use that. We do have a roadmap to start shrinking all of our attributes of these TGVs and the glass as well. Our sweet spot for glass thickness is approximately 200 microns thick. We can go lower, and if we choose a different type of glass, we may go down to 40 or 20 microns of thickness for a substrate. At that point in time, glass becomes almost as flexible as a polyamide tape. This is, I'm a very graphical person, obviously. I'm, I'm Groot. But uh, these are the sectors that we thought through as far as market sectors to focus on. Well, we couldn't say the last column talks about the market. We have to talk about some technologies as well. Those being the device technology we have to interface with and provide interconnect to. And also the key enabling technologies, or what we call KETs that have to take place in order to pull this together and provide a roadmap and a solution for each one of our customers. I won't go through each one of them, but there are th basically these five areas. And uh, the most important for us is that with IoT, it's pretty important to have a glass interposer. Uh, there are some commercially available products out there. They're really for the RF front end. Uh, microstructured glass substrates, because in the area of uh, uh, biosensors and microfluidics, we have to make some sense of this by allowing the customer to be able to flow fluid through there as well. Um, these will be glass. We won't venture into the uh, plastic substrates. Um, the next would be a hermetic package. Can you envision having a glass substrate, chip technology, putting a cavity around that and sealing it again with glass. That can be done with laser welding uh, at room temperature, so you're not influencing it with a high temperature excursion. You've got good thermal history. And as always, uh, MEMS technology. Glass is very stable, has a very good surface roughness uh, associated with it. It's less than five nanometers of surface roughness, as received. And the last being that our glass will also be used in optics. Makes plenty of sense. We can now have, and we're trending towards, an electro-optical circuit board. Now, you can imagine that part of the signal has to travel electrically, but part of the system and uh, signal path will be optically driven. So in this case, we can do optical couplers and other features that are in an um, electro-optic system. I always bias this towards glass being the ultimate solution. But it is, in many instances here, compared to silicon and compared to organic material. So I think we've got the winning attributes to make a nice, stable substrate. And as I said, glass is not glass is not glass. There are variants in there, and I threw in silicon as well. First of all, we want to minimize the amount of stress that's put into the device and uh, the chipsets because there are some strain and stress effects that take place. So depending on the application 
and uh, the need for a uh, transparent system, we can select that. And the one thing that's not on there is the dielectric constant and the loss factor as well. But these materials, and as we trend towards the bottom, they get much, much better. With the last two being biocompatible materials. We can put various metallizations in, in the via as well. So I'm sharing a little bit on our strategy going forward. We do like disruptive technologies. One of those is packaging. Um, certainly 2.5D, we have it in our cell phones and in our smart appliances, but we tend to split it up based on what we could enable once we had technology in place. One of those with glass interposers and the L slash S is lines and spaces. We hope to drive it well below uh, 50 microns. Right now we can do about 25 microns of lines and spaces. So you can be a very dense um, substrate. We also will uh, use that for RF, but we're really working hard to incorporate it within silicon photonics, or SIFO is the acronym. And then finally, we'll get better signal integrity out of it. We'll have active substrates versus passive substrates. So they can have antenna. Glass also accepts metallization on top, so you can put antennas in there as well. And optical waveguides, that's a new feature, is to be able to put an optical waveguide in glass. Don't carry the fibers too far. So this is the natural situation. And then in the area of uh, uh, wafer micro bumps, we have two divisions there. One of those is a high speed multi-chip module and also a system and package that ends up in both fine pitch, such as a, focal, or a um, field programmable gate array or FPGA with high speed capability or even into mixed technologies such as in biomedical, where you've got a lot of sensors in the same vicinity. I'll just show you this briefly, but we have developed a fingerprint sensor that is not capacitive touch. It's ultrasonic. And uh, this is now the size of maybe your pinky. It's very small and can in, in, be interfaced to any of this structure as well. But these are the areas we will be uh, initiating programs in. We also are venturing into filters and um, RF front end devices and, and elements. So we can fill vias, we can also fill slots, and that's the ideal situation, particularly for high speed RF. We've also demonstrated that we can uh, put vias and such in silicon, not being transparent, but a leading manufacturer of industrial printers uses this system to uh, show their prowess to have very fine resolution on a very large format. And then glass interposers, we show you that we can put a solder mask on it and we can treat it just like a circuit board material. What we're ultimately doing is coming from two ends. This is from Yol development out of France. We have the silicon wafer which has very, very fine lines and spaces. We also have circuit boards which are larger technologies. And, um, we're meeting it somewhere in between with our lines and spaces falling in the sub 10 micron space. And that's the beauty behind it is we found a solution that works quite well. People say cost. Glass has got to be expensive. Well, let's look here. These are ceramic interposers with about a 10x of that of organic interposers. We also see here silicon interposers, which are about 5x the cost. And then we put in um, a glass interposers, somewhere below uh, silicon interposers. But we have a plan to go to panelization versus wafers. That's where you have scale. And fortunately, the flat panel industry has really helped us with the cost reduction. Now we implement tools that are going to handle large panels. And that's where the cost drops. And we can do a lot more in the 2.5D and 3D world. So we're talking about uh, microfluidics here. The key thing is you can take glass. It can be really thick glass too. It doesn't have to be thin glass. You can take a femtosecond laser, use it as a 3D printer, put in the CAD file. It will figure out what the trajectory of the tool path is and actually form an irradiated region such as cavities and chambers and uh, branching. And all you have to do is hit it with a little bit. That takes place over seconds. So you can do whole panels and wafers using that. 
then you hit it with a chemical etch such as KOH, uh, potassium hydroxide, or HF, which we don't like to do too much of, but that will etch away in, in a, a single digit minutes. So the whole idea is now there's a mechanism and we'll improve it for uh, cycle time as well. But imagine having a microscope slide that has uh, quite a bit of fluid feature to it. It also has lasers. You can put an interface fiber into that, like an optical fiber, into basically a small ferrule or holding uh, uh, fixture within the side of the glass. So you now can do laser uh, spectroscopy on that, or laser types of spectroscopy. You can also put in uh, electroacoustic devices for breaking up flow. And uh, you now have a system that's quite unique. Um, that's one area where you can now integrate chips and, and sensors all together right on one surface. This glass can be disposable, but we're going to try to price it uh, more effectively than plastic. If you look at the microfluidics.com website, there is a complete discussion of cost, also feature sizes that you can achieve. This can do some very small micro channels, so, and mixing and, and uh, micro reactions as well. So cost, we will try to scale it down just like we've done with the electronic components as well. Um, but it's the beauty that we have a femtosecond laser that acts as a 3D printer. It's actually a subtractive process, but um, it works the same way. Well, we're trying to overcome so many hurdles, but the top three, I think, are still for packaging biomedical devices is fast cycle time and size reduction, miniaturization, uh, improving quality over time. This is a new area for many people, ourselves included, and then trying to drive that price point down so that we have a way for you to inherit um, other chipsets within that system. So uh, with that said, um, we're working very industriously and uh, quite quickly on biomedical packaging solutions. Um, we, are, we have a strong expertise in solving the assembly and manufacturing and packaging of uh, very unique um, uh, product definition and, and delivery. We're also set to do a roadmap and continue on that roadmap to do higher levels of integration. Uh, we will probably transition to some level of a more cost-effective silicon interposer as well. We are dealing with a lot of multi-chip, multi-chip uh, types and technologies. And then finally, we have developed techniques that are robust and can vary from high density to low density. 